Hi guys, welcome back to K-World for the first four episodes recap of the K-drama Blood Free. With a plot spoiler alert, let's get to it. The drama opens on Christmas Eve with an AR projector presentation revealing the grim reality of animals being hunted and butchered for their meat and other products, showcased to VIP guests of the biotech company BF, an abbreviation for Blood Free. Yoon Jae-yoo, the chairwoman of the company, delivers an announcement to the guests about their successful commercialization of lab-cultured meat and fur. While serving cultured seafood to the guests, Jayu reveals that BF's next ambitious goal is to expand into grain and crop culturing within the next six months. Among the audience is Chai Woon, and on hearing the popping sound of a champagne bottle, has a traumatic flashback of an explosion where he helps Jayu to her feet. After the event, Chae Woon sees Jayu navigating through a crowd of protesters and supporters. While stuck in traffic, a man jumps off an overpass onto Jayu's car and dies. Chae Woon, who was also in traffic, rushes to Jayu's aid on seeing it. From afar, we see a man with a scar on his cheek watching them. Jayu suffers from bruises and ends up needing a neck brace. They learn that the man who died was a stock breeder who had been waiting for Jayu for hours at the overpass until she passed and he intentionally jumped onto Jayu's car. While watching the dash cam footage of the accident, Jung Hae Dun, a lawyer and head of planning at BF Group, finds Chae Woon familiar and decides to look into him. In the meantime, Kim Shin Gu, a bioengineer who developed the core technology for artificial cultured meat, notes that all the files on BF laboratory computers have been encrypted by a ransomware organization named Citizen X. In order to decrypt the files, the hackers demand a ransom of 80 billion won in Bitcoin within 48 hours. Jayoon calls an immediate meeting for the core team of BF Group and learns that Citizen X targets companies and government agencies, and no one until now has been able to successfully decrypt the files without paying the ransom. At the same time, articles claiming that BF's culture fluid contains germs start to spread. Haidun investigates the articles and discovers that the tip-off had been emailed to news agencies by Citizen X as well. Jayoon decides to keep the hacking incident a secret to minimize damage. Haidun also manages to conduct a simple background check on Chai Woon and informs Jayu that he was a former naval intelligence commander and has worked as a bodyguard for Park Dae Song, the CEO of Sangwa Group. While researching Citizen X on her own, Jayoon learns that the naval intelligence command was attacked by Citizen X during the time Chai Woon served. We then see Chai Woon getting called in by Lee Moon Koo, the former president. Moonku reveals to Chai Woon that he was the one who sent him the VIP invitation to attend Jai Yoon's presentation. Apparently, in January 2024, Moonku had decided to make a surprise visit to a dispatched troops camp named Azoran while he was on an overseas trip with two congressmen and four business persons, including Jai Yoon and Dae Sung. He had informed those with him about his surprise visit seven hours prior, and the explosion occurred 30 minutes after their plane landed. Chai Woon was a soldier at Azoran and had escorted the president and the group to the camp base. Because the group he traveled with was the only one aware of his visit to the army base and both congressmen had died, Moon Koo suspects that one of the four business persons planned the attack. Moon Koo is convinced that it was Jai Yu, as she was not on good terms with him. Apparently, she had requested Moon Koo to abolish the law requiring cultured meat to be labeled as genetically modified food, but Moon Koo had refused. After being forced to step down from the presidency due to being disabled from the attack, Jayu managed to convince the next president to amend the law. Therefore, Moon Koo argues that she plotted the explosion to remove him as an obstacle, and BF has grown exponentially since Moon Koo stepped down from the presidency. Moon Koo has been aware that Chae Woon was investigating the Azoran attack on his own, which is why he had worked for Dae Sung as his bodyguard and attended Jai Yoon's presentation despite not knowing the sender of the invitation. Moon Koo is also aware of Own Sun, the co-founder and research director of BF Group, looking for a personal bodyguard for Jai Yu due to recent events. So he convinces Chae Woon to take the job and investigate Jai Yu, just as he did Dae Song. After Chae Woon leaves, we see Moon Koo meeting with the current prime minister, Sonu Jae, who also happens to be his grandson, and they plan together to take down Jai Yu, wondering if Chae Woon would buy their story and work as they ask him to. Chae Woon manages to pass San's test and the fake ambush set at his house to test his loyalty, and he gets recruited as Jae Yoo's bodyguard. After their initial meeting, Jae Yoo asks him about the Naval Intelligence Command being hacked by Citizen X while Chae Woon was serving. Chae Woon convinces her to pay the ransom and advises her to report it to the government authorities, as they can monitor all the exchanges that would allow them to catch the culprit. 
Jiayu hesitates because a government investigation would make the public suspicious about the news regarding the germs in the cultured meat. Reluctantly, Jiayu goes to Jay and asks for his help to investigate the hackers. Jay agrees to it if Jiayu donates 80 billion won to local primary industries and provides the public with proof that the culture fluid is safe. Jiayu agrees to the donation, but only commits to providing proof of the cultural fluid's safety, refusing to disclose its ingredients, pointing out that it's the core of the industry and is top secret. Meanwhile, Sun gets informed about the research team member Hong Sai Ip crashing her car. San goes to check on Sai Ip in the hospital and informs Jiayu about the accident as well. Jiayu becomes concerned on hearing it as all recent incidents revolve around the BF lab. It appears Chai Woon has been recording his entire day's incidents using a hidden camera in his shirt button. After returning home, he checks through the footage and closely examines Jiayu's computer. He notices a difference in pronunciation from the hacking incident at the Naval Intelligence Command. The Citizen X hackers who targeted the Naval Intelligence Command had used Cyrillic symbols in their pronunciation, but the symbols on Jiayu's screen are different and has a style often used by Koreans. He immediately informs Jiayu and suggests that the hacking incident is actually a copycat one. They assume the hacker is likely someone close to Jiayu, disguised as Citizen X, so she begins to suspect her own core team. Jiayu calls in Seo Hui, the IT expert of BF, and tasks him with locating all the employees who have access to the central lab. She then accessing their flight ticket purchases and money transfers, despite it being illegal. Since Hui is the first to know that Jiayu is suspicious of her own employees, she has Chae Woon follow him after Hui leaves the office. Meanwhile, Jiayu realizes that Chae Woon seems overly knowledgeable about Citizen X and that he was the one who convinced her to pay the ransom. She becomes suspicious of Chae Woon as well and conducts a broader background check on him and learns that he was present at the time of the explosion at Azoran. When Chae Woon contacts her to confirm that Hui went straight home, she confronts him about the explosion and expresses her concerns about him being one of Moonku's informants. The next day, Jiayu visits the site of Sayup's accident alone. To her surprise, Chae Woon follows her and goes to the site instead of her. Noticing the dash cam is missing, the police contact San as he was the last person contacted by Sayup before the accident, and they suspect foul play. San informs Jiayu about it and learns that she has been tracking all the employees as she suspects the hacking was done by one of them. With the help of the AI assistant named Young Sil, they find out that Shingu was with her at the time of the accident and realize that he caused the accident. We then flash back to the day of Sayip's accident. Shingu was indeed the one who did the hacking, and Sayip, while delivering Shingu's belongings, overhears him exclaiming with joy upon learning that Jiayu had paid the ransom. Sayip becomes suspicious of Shingu and calls San to inform him, but San quickly hangs up without listening to what she has to say. Shingu then orchestrates Sayip's accident and flees to Vietnam. By the time Jiayu, San, and Chae Woon reach Shingu's apartment, they find it empty. When San phones him, Shingu answers, and when Jiayu takes over the call, Shingu sneers at Jiayu, accusing her of being a murderer and blaming her for his wife's death. He hangs up and throws away the phone. Devastated by Shingu's betrayal, Jiayu informs Jay about the situation and asks him to inform embassies to put Shingu on the no-fly list. Meanwhile, Che Woon breaks the lock to Shingu's apartment, and they find his phone and the company smartwatch. In a flashback, we see Shingu approaching Jiayu after his wife was diagnosed with intestinal cancer. Desperate to save his wife, Shingu pleads with Jiayu to test a procedure on his wife despite Jiayu's reminders that it is still in development. When San learns about it, he criticizes Jiayu for taking advantage of Shingu's desperation and testing a procedure that is still in progress on his wife. Jiayu argues that because their company can't perform animal testing, testing on a human is their only option. Ultimately, Shingu's wife dies much sooner due to the testing. They realize that Sayip must have caught on to Shingu's actions, which is likely why Shingu sank her car. Since Shingu has already fled to Vietnam and is on the no-fly list, he is likely to forge a fake passport to escape. Jiayu announces a reward for anyone reporting his whereabouts. Later, with the help of Moonku's influence, Chae Woon goes to see a former officer who served at Azoran named Kier. Kier had confessed to the attack on the army base and was imprisoned for life. Despite his confession, Chae Woon is not convinced that Kier is involved in the bombing. He argues with Kier, mentioning the children Kier taught in the army camp who ultimately died in the explosions. However, Kier refuses to cooperate. Chae Woon also confronts a group of illegal immigrant brokers and convinces them to use their connections to find Shingu's new identity in Vietnam. During a function, Sionu Gun, who is Jay's father, and Moonku's former son-in-law, 
who is also the chairman of Dorsen Group, make an offer to Jiayu that he'd like to buy BS headquarters, laboratory, and cell culture research for 32 trillion won. Jiayu is tempted, as it would relieve her of responsibilities and allow her to focus on her research, but she becomes worried about the sudden offer and whether she can keep BF's intangible assets concealed. Eventually, she refuses the offer. Chaiwoon receives information about Shingu's new identity from the illegal immigrant brokers and informs Jiayu. Though she is glad to receive the information, Jiayu confesses her distrust of Chaiwoon, as he always seems to have what she needs. Chaiwoon explains that he was held accountable when the Navy Intelligence Command was hacked, as he was a captain at the time, so he is desperate to catch the criminal behind the ransomware. Convinced, Jiayu gives Chaiwoon a smartwatch connected to BF's AI operating system. Just then, they receive news that Shingu has died of a heart attack on his flight to France. Although the autopsy report finds no evidence of murder, Shingu's sudden death turns public opinion against Jiayu, and rumors spread that she murdered Shingu for revealing information about the germs in the culture fluid. As a result, the protests surrounding the company buildings become more violent. Since Jiayu has been living in the company building, Chaiwoon becomes concerned about it, and because finding a hotel with an entire floor empty in a short period is impossible, he decides to take Jiayu and her driver Hoseng to his house. In the meantime, as they arrive, the scarred man attempts to break into the house. But on hearing Chai Woon's arrival, he sneaks away. Although Chai Woon notices a suspicious car parked outside his house, he doesn't follow up on it. Later, Haidun arrives at Chai Woon's house with permitted guns for both Chai Woon and Ho Seng in case they need them to protect Jai Yu. We then see that Jay is suffering from some sort of disease and his health is being monitored, and his family's desire to take over BF Group seems to have something to do with it. The next day, while with Hui, Jiayu gets called in by Jay for a sudden meeting. However, when she reaches there, Jay hurries off, apologizing that a police station's armory has been ransacked and needs his immediate attention. On their way back, Jiayu's team is forced to take a detour because of road construction. Chaiwoon notices the workers and the officer acting strangely, and while on the detour, Jiayu's team get ambushed. The attackers manage to crash their car, and Jiayu and others are forced to flee on foot. Jiayu has flashbacks of the explosion at the Azoran camp and her convulsing in a hospital. Chaewoon, on seeing her panicking, assures her that he'll protect her, but while throwing back a grenade at the attackers, which lands beside them, Chaewoon gets shot. With that, the episode ends. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.